lighting. Something I've been absolutely obsessed with ever since I went to a concert and recognized just how important lighting can be to making really great experiences and particularly, well, for video and photo. But I know nothing about lighting. I, in fact, I'm a, a total noob at it. But since moving into the story story, I've become absolutely obsessed and going all the way to the point of investing more and more and more money to make the lighting just right. And well, let's just say that my wallet isn't so happy about it. But over time, I've invested in really great LEDs. Look, I can even control the color. Now beyond the colorful and fancy LED lights, I went and got what one of my favorite YouTubers, Peter McKinnon recommended, and well, I'll just call it the sun. Ooh. Yeah, a little aggressive. Uh, that's a little bit better. And it's a phenomenal light, the Aperture 120D Mark II, which is definitely good for professionals, but also a little pricey. And I figured there had to be a better way. And that's when I discovered Daniel Schiffer and his $40 cake pan light. Damn, that looks so damn good. What do you think? I figured, well, it might as well be worth a shot. So I went on the web, clicked the affiliate link in Daniel Schiffer's description and ordered myself the gear. And 24 hours later, thanks to the magic of Amazon Prime, I was ready to do a little test. Now cue the time-lapse build. Oh my god, you pensé direct. Oh, tabarnak. Pas vrai. Ah, yo, yo. Well, this is awkward. I clamped this to this and broke this. We're just gonna do a take two, Amazon Prime, one more time. And we're back. <laughs> yeah, it's been a few days. Um, Amazon delivered again and I've got a new light strip. So uh, let's uh, take round two. No more time lapse, maybe. Okay, well. Well, maybe a time lapse. Dun, 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 dun. The ultimate test. Wow, that looks pretty good. And we're back. Didn't break the clamp this time and <laughs> got the clamp that's can sit up on the thing. So here's what I'm gonna do. Why don't we test these lights out? Why don't we put these this whole system to the test directly and let me show you the difference between the different lighting setups that I have. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna show you a behind the scenes and I'm gonna hit record on this. So now you are in this camera right over here and I'm gonna show you the different lights that I have. So of course I've got the ring light that is behind the scenes over here. I've got this new light that was created, the $40 pan light, the 120D, which has the big dome and of course the honeycomb pattern to just not make it spray all over the space and kind of diffuse the light. I've got the house lights up above and there are two of those house lights over here for the podcast. I call them the podcast lights really. Okay, so this is what these panels look like over here. Of course, I got the nice Superhero Academy emblem, shameless plug. And of course, the actual house lights, the actual lights that were here when I first got here uh, or that I installed that were just kind of the very basic setup for this lighting switch flow. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna show you around what 
these different lights look and feel like. So this is what the house lights look like without anything else on, just that one light bulb that I was showing you earlier. And obviously you can tell that this is just not bright enough. This is just not cutting it when it comes to anything like this. Obviously I can crank up the ISO, but it's just not going to look good. Um, and going anything above this, or you know, even a thousand, a thousand, two fifty, is just not super ideal, particularly in a set or setting that feels really powerful. So I'm gonna go ahead and flick on the ring light, which I think might be a little bit more aggressive. So I'm not turning the ring light on to its full capacity. Um, but you could definitely see here that it's pretty bright and it's definitely aggressive. It's not the best lighting when it's facing me in this direct way, but it's definitely helpful. It's definitely adding a lot of lighting and it could be tweaked and changed. I could definitely change the temperature and the color temperature. And uh, why don't I give it a shot by adjusting the light a little bit more, seeing if I can make it a little bit less harsh. So this is that same ring light adjusted for height, a little bit higher, still feels nice and solid. Um, fairly good light. I mean, I, I'm not seeing this in post. I'm not seeing this right now and I'm just seeing this without my glasses. But at the end of the day, it looks fairly well lit. It's pretty good. This is definitely a passable light. Um, and it definitely could have been used on the camera where the camera could have been put right in the middle of the ring light for very good quality as well. So I feel like that, um, that the ring light is a pretty good option. It's a pretty good option, definitely if you're doing anything live, if you need lighting that's nice and even, or I love the ring light when it comes to teaching on a chalkboard or teaching a live course, because it really lights me evenly, particularly for when I'm doing stuff for the web. But I don't find it particularly nice when shooting higher end video uh, and a production like this. So let's move to the 120D. This light might be a little bit aggressive, um, maybe a little too bright in terms of what is going on here, but let's see if I can maybe turn down the light on this just to get it to be a little less aggressive. I think this is gonna look really, really good. Okay, I feel like this is quite dramatic, very nice look, feels good. Um, not too bright, not too harsh on the eyes, definitely a lot to move around and definitely quite expensive and not necessarily the optimal light. Now, again, I haven't adjusted these lights a ton. I've kind of left them in a space where I can navigate around. I could definitely move them to make, you know, slightly better lighting, but it's giving you an idea of the power and of the light itself uh, and the structure of what that might look and feel like if you were to just kind of set it up real quick, put it at like a 45 and let it hit you. Okay, so now I've got this light on here, which is the cake pan light, is a little bit closer to me than the 120D was, and it is on full blast, and of course it has no capacity for me to change the level of that light. What I can say is that it's definitely not as powerful, it's not as calibrated, but it it is dramatic, It is. it does feel nice, it does have a nice glow, but it feels like it needs to be a little bit closer to me. It feels like if this was gonna do really well, it would need to look or feel a little closer. Let me put on my glasses here though and see. Yeah, it's definitely not nearly as bright and nearly as powerful, but it definitely looks pretty good, pretty good. Let me see if I can bring it a little closer what that might look and feel like if I just put it right outside of the frame. How about that? Okay, so here's what this looks like a little bit closer up. Now, this is right outside the frame. It is a nice, soft kind of light. Feels a little bit harsh, perhaps. Um, now, obviously, the angle itself will drastically change the look and feel of the lighting. If I remove my glasses here, a little less glare. But this can definitely be kind of a key light, specifically, if this were off in the back and just kind of lighting up the top, this does feel like a very good support light, but it doesn't quite feel like the quality that I would want. It's obviously not the kind of light I'd want to show up with on a professional shoot. So, I mean, I give it a, I don't know what I give this. I give it this like a B. I give this like a 70, seven out of 10. You know what I mean? Like 70 on a hundred, seven out of 10 is what this kind of feels like. I mean, the price point's pretty good, it's interesting, but 
it's definitely not ideal. Now, here's the truth. Out of all the lighting scenarios that I set up, we would obviously want some kind of extra lighting like this with this extra light that kind of fills in the rest of the space definitely adds something to it right um i do feel i do feel it looks really good when there's an, another light hmm maybe i should rethink this what do you think what would you say this starts to look and feel like down in the comments below? I do see myself using this. I mean, as much as a seven on 10, I do see myself actually using this to make dramatic lighting or add effects in the background. Um, and it will be a key light that I will use rather than I used to use this ring light that I had um, as kind of a secondary light to help me out. I also had some small um, battery powered lights, which are nice good they're nice and portable they could go on stands really easy um, and i would use that off a reflector but i definitely see that in studio a light like this is going to find a home somewhere this is definitely going to have a use in some way shape or form i really like it when it's a little higher up and more dramatic here like this and just that's one key light helps make it real cool so anyway for real i would really love to know what you think about this light I think it looks pretty good. It's, it's kind of growing on me and it's definitely gonna find a home here in my studio.